welcome back to the Cool Fear Channel. I'm your host, Jesse the Bat Madrigal, aka the Buff Collector. The information on the channel is time for all collectors and not children. And welcome to episode 62 of Coffee and Toys, guys. As always, we will go into this week's channel updates, this week's toy haul, this week's toy news, and so much more. But first, if you're new, then welcome. This channel is all about cool action figures, analyzing them, hunting them, taking pics of them, and of course, playing with them. If that's your sort of thing, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and hit that bell notification icon so you stay notified when I do upload new content. If you do enjoy this video or any other videos that I put out, please remember to give them a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. With all that being said, guys, once again, welcome to episode 62 of coffee and toys guys before we get started i do want to shout out and thank channel sponsor entertainment earth check out my entertainment earth affiliate link down in the description below to check out some cool figures as well as support the channel with that being said we are doing something a little bit different here on the cool figures channel and coffee and toys podcast and that is a reshoot guys so as the filming of this this is being filmed on saturday opposed to Friday, which I normally film my podcast on. So that way I have all day Saturday to edit my podcast. However, yesterday was just an off day, guys. I have to admit, I kind of got home from the gym, had clients in the morning. I was a little tired, took a bit of a nap, and kind of forced myself to get up from that nap in order to record this week's episode. And so when I began the editing process, I realized my energy and attention and focus just wasn't there in the episode and it was very low energy and I felt like, you know what, if I don't even want to watch this while I edit, what makes me think that you guys are going to want to watch it while you guys are enjoying the podcast and whatnot. So I thought to myself, why not just go ahead and reshoot it? So for the first time ever in the short lifespan of Coffee and Toys, the podcast, I am doing the first ever reshoot and that's why my list of notes is all crumbled up because I crumpled it up at the end, threw it at the camera and decided to reshoot it uh, instead of, you know, going with the original cut, which honestly, guys, was just was just really bad. Like I said, I just wasn't focused. I wasn't into it. Like I said, I really had to force myself to film and it was more of like me. I'm a person of habit and discipline. And so when I'm in that mode, I kind of just go and go and go. In the gym, it works because you're not having to interact with anybody. You're not having to be this up tempo person and do all this stuff. And uh, you're just, you could just keep to yourself and do what you got to do, and that works. But when you're in front of a camera trying to relay stuff, relay news, relay stories, uh, and you're doing it in a very monotone, very boring sense, it, it doesn't capture the audience. And so I decided, like I said, while I was editing, you know, if I don't even want to go through this, what makes me think that you guys would want to go through it? Uh, so we are reshooting this week's episode. Um, nothing's going to change from it besides maybe adding one bit of news that did get released this morning that I would have otherwise not included since I would have filmed it on Friday. Um, but yeah, guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into this episode. Once again, I do want to apologize for not having Coffee and Toys live this week. Um, it was an extremely busy week for myself, and on top of that, the day that I would have had Coffee and Toys live, Thursday, I actually went and picked up my brand new car. So, story time real quick, guys. Two weeks into my previous job, which was the worst job in the world, um, two weeks into it, uh, I was working my second split of my shift. I get in my car to go home. I turn on my Honda Accord, and if you know Honda Accords, those are silent cars. They're not loud, they're not revvy, and it sounded like I had just turned on a fucking Harley. And if you know cars, then you know where I'm going with this. I instantly switched it off, and I prayed that if I switch it on again, it won't make that same noise. Switched it back on, same loud, you know, engine noise, and I instantly knew that my catalytic converter had been stolen. And so for the past three months, since about the second week of November, really, I've not really had a car. I've been sharing with my mom, my sister, even brought my grandma's car for a while. Um, we went car shopping and all that stuff. Finally found a car that I liked. Uh, unfortunately, every dealership in my area, and even within the lower portion of the state I'm in, Southern California, did not have the color and the trim that I wanted. I wanted a specific color and a trim with a moonroof. And a lot of them had the color, they just didn't have the moonroof. And so I had to wait three, almost four weeks to get my new car in. But I'm super happy that I did because it's the color that I want. It 
has the trim that I want with the moonroof and I couldn't be happier. So I was a little busy on Thursday taking care of that. So unfortunately I was not able to host Coffee and Toys Live. And that's one of the reasons why I really haven't brought back Coffee and Toys Live like I did this weekly podcast because uh, not only is that a commitment for myself, but that's also a commitment from my guest. And I would really hate having somebody commit to me, schedule something, take time out of their busy day only for me to drop the ball and be like, hey, you know what, something came up, I can't do the show tonight. And it's just like, that just looks really bad on me and on my show. So instead of doing that, I decided to just kind of do a Coffee and Toys Live whenever I had the time. And so unfortunately, I just haven't had the time to do the latest one that I announced with Austin Nicholas. And unfortunately, next Thursday, I am also busy, so I will not be able to host Coffee and Toys Live then either. However, I am hoping to get it done and scheduled within two weeks from this week so uh, after this week one more week so not this coming week but the following week on that thursday i'm hoping that i can schedule it and have it with austin nicholas so we'll see what happens we'll see if that comes to fruition um i would honestly love to double back and speak to some of the guests that i had lined up previously for last year's shows that i just didn't get to talk to you know um, I had enough guests to, to follow me through to the end of the year. Uh, so I was super excited to talk to so many of those people as well. Unfortunately, like I said, I had to start another job. That job just took up so much of my fucking time, so much of my fucking life and energy. It was a real miserable experience, but a learning one nonetheless. Um, but now that I'm no longer doing that job, now that I'm back at training clients at my house, I have a little more freedom, I have a little more energy. I wanted to bring back the podcast and I would love to bring back the Coffee and Toys live show weekly. But like I said, I'm just not in a place right now that I know uh, weeks in advance what I'm gonna be doing and stuff. And so I don't wanna schedule anybody. I don't want them to take time out of their busy day. And then only for me to be like, oh, you know what? Sorry, I, I can't do it. I'm busy tonight. I got something else came up. So that's why I really haven't brought back Coffee and Toys Live as a weekly show. And I've just been kind of rescheduling, rescheduling, rescheduling this one with Austin Nicholas. But I am going to be hosting it with him very soon. And uh, like I said, when we do pick that week and we have it scheduled, uh, on our stories, we will include a box for questions. So that way you guys can submit your own questions. Um, all about collecting skills either 112 scale, 1 fourth scale, 1 sixth scale, as well as your fitness questions. You know, him and I are very much into fitness and everything, and we want to help support the community as well. It seems like a lot of people in 2022 in this community wanted to take some steps into bettering their health, and me and him are all for it. And so we want you guys to send in your questions that you guys have. Like I said, whether it be about collecting, uh, toy scales or fitness you know we want you guys to ask those questions so that we can answer them for you with me I have a decades worth of knowledge and experience in the gym myself not too sure about his number of years of experience but he clearly has an understanding and grasp of nutrition and training as you've seen through his transformation photos slash reels and so it'll be a great and so it'll definitely be a great conversation and topic for us to and so it will definitely be a great conversation. So that's pretty much it in terms of the channel update. Um, not too much else from that. Uh, so with that being said, why don't we go ahead and move our attentions over to this week's toy haul. Now, unlike last week when my table was completely filled and I was like kind of crammed in this little itty bitty space just to be on camera. This week we we're kind of reverting back to about three weeks ago uh, when we only had one thing on the table. But this one thing is absolutely immaculate it is the NECA toys one fourth scale Heath Ledger Joker I could not pass this guy up um, obviously I was scrolling on offer up like I always do like a dumbass whenever I want to burn some cash in my pocket and this guy was actually selling him for 175 and as you guys know with me I never pay full price on offer up I always negotiate and if they're not willing to negotiate I just personally walk away because if you're on offer up you put the price up just a little bit higher so that you have some room for negotiation you never put your actual price that's that's just my way of looking at it and my way of doing things on there it's a lot easier you get the results that you want um, but this guy was selling him for 175 and I talked him down to 140 Originally, I asked him if he would do it for 130 and he said, no, 140 is the lowest he would take. And I was like, all right. But at the time, I still didn't have my car and I was trying to work out scheduling with my mom and my sister to see whose car and when I could borrow it to take it to go. And 
it just wasn't lining up. And so he ended up messaging me, asking me if I was going to be able to buy it. If not, he's going to have to move on to the next purchaser. And I told him, you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to a car right now. So go ahead and pass it on to the next purchaser. And thank you for, you know, the amazing offer you did give me because this guy for 140 was still an amazing offer seeing as he's going for 175 plus everywhere else. Um, I, even at 175, that was the cheapest I've seen him online. And so he's like, all right. And then he messaged me again on Sunday night or Sunday morning. He's like, hey, I have one more left. I'm willing to let it go for $120. Now I completely ignored the message because I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna be able to go pick it up, blah, blah, blah. I opened it up on Monday to see that. And I was like, that's below the offer I had initially even offered him. And so I quickly messaged him. I was like, hey man, if you still have it, sorry I had a busy weekend, but if you still have it, I'll take it for 120. And thankfully enough, he still had it left and uh, I was able to go pick it up. So I was able to score this guy for $120, guys. That's even cheaper than what he retailed for. I believe he retailed for on NECA's website for 125 plus shipping plus taxes plus any other fees they want to tack onto that. Um, so I was able to get them way below retail at that point. Uh, so yeah, such an amazing figure, such an amazing representation of Heath Ledger's Joker. I'm still trying to work on getting him into my 1-6 scale collection, uh, but that's even more on pause now that Hot Toys has announced that they're revisiting Dark Knight uh, trilogy characters and figures that they've already produced. Um, but I'm also looking at that in art one. I mean, that is a spectacular Heath Ledger Joker um, and it just looks absolutely immaculate it literally looks like he struck down Heath Ledger as the Joker and are putting him on your shelf now it is a pricier figure I'll have to admit uh, especially the two-pack which I would want to get if I was gonna get one from in art um, but that comes with the materials the tailoring the attention to detail in the face sculpt because like I said the face sculpt is absolute perfection to Heath Ledger the tailoring on the suit and the soft goods is absolute perfection it's like they tailored a real human being and they use a lot of metal where metal should be whereas Hot Toys, NECA, they use a lot of plastic where metal should be. In art, went the other way and decided to go with metal. So like the Glock he comes with, it's officially licensed, it has all the markings of a real Glock, it's real metal, it has tiny little bullets inside um, the grenades are metal and of different sculpts and everything so a lot of great work and accessories and materials are put into those NR jokers that kind of balloon the price but in my opinion it's warranted but yeah guys so for this week's toy haul we just have this guy he is all PVC plastic except for this metal chain right here which he does have and it is loose and you know movable and all that fun stuff i would have wished he would have come with an alternate foot or a sliding effect to bring out the blade in his foot however he does not but like i said it is the quarter scale so this guy is massive this guy is just an absolute giant i'm gonna pull him back just a bit because probably with the way my camera set up this time around um i was a little too close um but yeah this guy is absolutely massive uh you know it kind of makes up for not having a bunch of toys on the table because he is just such a presence on this table and so yeah i mean i gotta be honest when i bought him first i was like fuck i have nowhere to put him but i was able to finesse some stuff move some things around separate some things unfortunately that looks really good together but i was able to find this guy in an amazing spot and even in front of a dark knight poster that i have it's a 3d poster with joker in the middle and all the bank robbers around him wearing the masks and everything and it's a 3d poster so joker's like sunken in and then the master on the side if i can remember i'll try to include an image right here of what the poster itself looks like and then what the poster and the figure itself look like in front of each other uh so yeah guys that pretty much wraps it up for this week's toy haul um i am in talks with someone to get a quarter scale batman figure for an amazing fucking price the only thing is they live an hour and a half away from me and so it was looking like something might have lined up because my dad was gonna be passing through there this weekend unfortunately the guy out of nowhere says he's not gonna be available uh, so we'll see if we can get it done uh, I told him you know he's not coming home till later in the afternoon early evening I'm um, hoping that this guy will be free by then he can let my dad pick him up because this Batman is going for an amazing deal. You know, he does have a few scuffs and he is a bit dusty and dirty, but I feel like I can really clean up the majority of the scuffs. 
as well as really deep clean the Batman himself and get him into great pristine condition. Uh, so I'm really hoping to be able to pick him up from this guy because I can get him for an amazing fucking deal. Um, but if not, I still have a few other ones lined up that I can still purchase from a little closer to myself. Just a little more in the price range. And so I guess it kind of levels out. What, do I want to put that money in my gas tank or do I want to put that money towards a figure? Um, but, you know, if he was a lot closer, it'd be a no-brainer. But the fact that it is used, it is scuffed, I am going to have to put a little bit more work into it. Um, it just doesn't seem worth it to me because now I'm putting in time equity, gas, and travel and you know all sorts of different stuff so for me i'm kind of on the edge of purchasing it from him and just purchasing it brand new from someone else but like i said we'll see what happens if he's here on the table next week you'll know what happened if not it's probably because i'm trying to save up for the more expensive new in package version so with that being said guys uh the only real other topic that i want to talk about before we get into this week's toy news is the last of us tv series um i am thoroughly enjoying the last of us tv series it has just done such an amazing job capturing the atmosphere the characters just the overall game in in everything it's just such an amazing adaptation and i feel like it's because they finally listen to the fans and by that i mean they are just adapting the game beat by beat now obviously there are a few cosmetic changes made here and there but those are mainly done to help make the story a little more cohesive and a little more understandable for people that have just watched the TV series and not played the game, you know? So like the airborne spore effects, that's more of a game mechanic than anything and knowing where you're at in the map. And so that doesn't really make sense or play too well in a storyline for a TV series. Um, when a certain character gets killed by the infected, uh, you know, in the video game, it's by a different faction and, you know, it, it just didn't make sense for them to be in that position, in that place for the TV series as much as it does for the video game. So all the little changes that they've been making work out in a sense, you know, it's not like, well, we just changed it for this reason. We changed it because this has changed in times and blah, blah, blah. No, they changed it so that the storyline is more cohesive. It flows better. And those are the changes that are acceptable. Uh, but besides that, they're literally playing the game beat by beat, cutscene for cutscene, almost line for line at times. Uh, it's pretty fucking awesome in my opinion. You know, I just wish that Sony and Uncharted would have done the same thing and taken just Nathan Drake's adventures from the video game beat by beat by beat, you know? But I also feel like really good video game adaptations can no longer be fulfilled through movies. Um, because, you know, movies are only two to three hours, whereas with this TV series, the last two episodes were two and a half hours, and we've gotten so much out of them, and so I feel like really fleshing out an entire video game series or a video game uh, that has potentially, you know, 20 to 40 hours of gameplay in a TV series is a much better route than going the movie route because you have those singular episodes. You can go an hour and a half in a single episode and it's not like, oh man, I got to sit through a four or five hour movie. Although when you put it all together, once the season's released, yeah, it's quite a long movie when you think about it. But with it being episodes and broken up into sections, they can fully flesh out parts that otherwise wouldn't have been fleshed out. Like imagine them trying to tell The Last of Us in a movie, in a two to three hour movie, when we've only gone two episodes and they've already accounted for two and a half hours. And look at all that that we've gone in those two episodes that most likely would have been cut to be in a movie. You know, if we were gonna make a movie, the first episode would be, uh, you know, the beginning, the infection day, and then probably Joel meeting up with uh, Tess and then them finding Ellie and then them going instantly out into the outside and then instantly into the the buildings that caved into each other and it'd be just like bam 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 like okay landmark moment landmark moment landmark moment landmark moment um whereas here they have more time to flesh things out um you know and the thing that's really making me curious about the last of us because it's been done so well so far is their season two because it was just recently announced that season two will be coming out now, they can go one of two ways with this. They can tell half the story of The Last of Us Part 1 in Season 1 and the second half of the story of Last of Us in Season 2. Or they can tell the whole story of Last of Us 
in season one. And part two is literally just going to tell us the whole entire story of Last of Us part two. Um, I'm really curious to see how that goes because um, if that's the case, I may bow after episode one or two of Last of Us part two. Uh, after one of my favorite characters is no longer in the video game for the remainder of the video game. Um, and I actually recently watched a video on why Last of Us Part Two is such a great game. Uh, I will say I have not played Last of Us Part Two for a number of reasons. One, I just haven't had the time. And two, after I found out that my favorite character is basically killed off in the first initial few levels i kind of was just like well why the fuck would i want to play the game anymore and that was actually the feeling amongst a lot of players i actually heard stories of people putting down the game for months because they were so annoyed so distraught so upset at the decision that the developers made at that moment um but like i said i recently watched a video from uh screen ran i think or um screen crush i think it was screen crush where he was explaining how it's such a great video game for this reason and makes us really think and care about these characters and then they rip them away from us and then we see it from different people's point of views perspectives and we really have to question who the villain is in this video game um but like i said originally just the fact that my favorite character is just off in the first I guess quarter of the game made me really not want to play it and so that's just another reason why I haven't played it but I'm really curious to see how they're going to handle the season two of Last of Us like I said are they going to break up the first video game into two parts and then two parts for the second half or are they going to just tell the whole entire story in the first season and then the whole entire second story in the second season um <clears throat> I don't know guys let me know down in the comments below what do you think do you think they're going to break it up into four separate parts or do you think they're just going to keep it with two separate parts? Something I will really praise the TV series on is their use of practical effects and sets and makeup, guys. Now, obviously, there are CGI scenes, especially when they're out in the open and you see, you know, the vastness of the city and everything. Um, and honestly, it, it looks a little wonky at times, I have to admit. But I feel like they make it up by giving us actual prosthetics with the clickers with the actual sets that they're in it's not all cgi like when they're in the museum in episode two it's an actual physical made set and it looks so close to the one in the video game it's absolutely amazing now i know they use cgi for a lot of the clickers and everything but i feel like the ones with the spore heads i feel like those were prosthetics and if you guys know me you know i'm a slut for practical effects and sets that nothing tops practical effects and sets no amount of cgi i don't give a fuck how good avatar looked practical effects and sets now i'm not saying that a practical effect on a person to make them look like a navi an avatar will look good but i'm just saying that as good as that cgi was as good as it looked it will never beat filming on a practical set with practical people with practical effects with practical you know body parts and you know prosthetics and all that stuff let me know if you think they're going to split up the first story into two parts or if they're going to tell it all in one go and then the second part is all going to be the second part of the video game i'm really curious to know what you guys think so with that being said guys let's go ahead and get on to this week's toy news so starting off this week's toy news is of course my favorite mezco toys they did announce a new figure coming to their 112th collective line and that is Ow man from the Lord of Tears. Apparently, this is a movie franchise or a movie uh, that's been around. I I've never heard of it to be honest. I personally thought this was kind of their venture into horror figures in the Rumble Society IP. However, I was proven wrong with it actually being attached to a IP. Um, but yeah, it would fit perfectly well on your Rumble Society shelf, in my opinion, especially with Gomez being there, a Roach head guy, you know, an Owl Man head guy. Um, that would work perfectly in my opinion. So even if you don't know the film and if you just want a creepy looking owl man figure for your Rumble Society shelf, this would be a great pickup for your collection. The next thing that they did announce was their first ever Five Points Friday for 2023, guys. So for this week's Five Point Fridays, their reveal was Josie and the Pussycats. You can go ahead and pre-order those now down in the description below through my Entertainment Earth affiliate link. 
not only would you be picking up these amazing figures, but you'd also be helping support the channel, guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about Muff Toys. If you don't know what Muff Toys is, it is a third-party company that creates some phenomenal figures. So they are going to be coming out with a TVA Loki figure sometime very soon. But they did also announce Clark Kent, Protector of Metropolis. So this is a Clark Kent figure. Uh, you can have him, you know, kind of exposing his Superman outfit underneath. However, it doesn't seem like it has a full Superman outfit underneath the pants and with a cape and everything. So unfortunately, you can't turn this into a completed Superman figure. Now, I do hope down the line that Muff Toys does give us an actual Superman 112 scale figure because the head sculpts with this is absolutely amazing. Now the announcement for this did come out about three weeks ago and I just personally have been forgetting to talk about it during the toy news so I did want to spotlight that and show it off because third party man, third party companies are just really nailing it so far you know it seems like a lot of the times third party figures are doing a lot better than say the actual primary companies. Uh, you know, we just took a look at the Felix's Toys third party uh, Heath Ledger's Joker this past week and that thing looks absolutely phenomenal. You know, I really doubt that any official uh, company would have been able to get a likeness to Heath Ledger's head sculpt that good. But once again, guys, third party companies are just hitting it out of the park. So talking about those primary companies, guys, let's go ahead and get back to those with NECA toys because I think Monday, Tuesday, or even potentially Wednesday, they decided to surprise drop on the Walmart app their Mirage Battle Damage Shredder. Now, <sighs> NECA plus Walmart just equals a headache. Um, but on top of that, guys, I, I think I'm done pre-ordering NECA figures from Walmart because... As it is, the NECA prices have increased, and so when you choose to buy them off Walmart.com or any online retailer, really, you're really paying about $50 for that figure because the base price is $35, plus you add taxes, plus you add shipping, you're basically at like $45 to $50 for a single NECA action figure. So I personally am going to wait until I see this guy in stores to pick him up because it's just not worth $50 for this single figure that we've actually gone like three or four times at this point just with updated deco uh, slash effects battle damage and all that stuff but it's essentially the same sculpt mold body whatever you want to say um, with this figure so next up guys let's go ahead and talk about a toy company that we don't normally talk about on the channel unless they really put out something that catches my attention like this week and that is the sh figure arts book of boba boba fett and throne this looks like an amazing version of boba fett and you get a 112 scale throne so honestly for me i don't collect sh figure arts but if i happen to see someone's you know parting it out selling that throne you know separately i I probably will pick it up for my Boba Fett. Um, not that I have the Black Series Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett, um, but I do have the Return of the Jedi one, and I think that one, I think that Boba Fett deserves a throne. Um, but yeah, this guy will be coming out very shortly, if not already out, because along with these images, they also showed him in package and everything. So uh, I did get a tip from my friend Robert that most of the times SH Figuarts comes with a bunch of loose joints and stuff. Uh, that's why I'm saying that I'll pick up the throne separately, but I won't pick up the complete set together because if that's the case, I just don't need a loose jointed Boba Fett, but he would have better articulation than say the Black Series one, but ah, it's, it's pros and cons guys, pros and cons. <laughs> Next up, let's go ahead and talk about Hasbro because their basketball line just went down in price guys they're claiming it's for the all-star weekend and all that stuff but i think it's because they just aren't selling you know 50 dollars a figure is absolutely astronomical if it's not an import they're struggling to get star wars fans to buy black series figures at 30 to 35 dollars so imagine trying to get collectors to buy basketball players at 50 dollar a piece now I will say this was probably aimed more towards like the hardcore basketball fan than the actual toy collector um, because if you think about hardcore basketball fans guys they pay a lot of money for shoes, jerseys, basketballs, anything you could imagine having to do with the NBA, tickets to go see them play, 
And so having a small plastic representation of their favorite athlete may have been something that Hasbro thought would entice them to spend that $50 on that figure. Um, you know, they're not so much toy collectors as they are just um, basketball collectors and having that, you know, miniature Steph Curry would probably complete their collection, have a little representation on their shelf. Um, but I feel like after the initial wave of purchases from those types of people, uh, it's kind of fizzled out. And now they're really having to pander to us actual toy collectors. And by that, they're having to lower the price to $29.99, which is still astronomical, in my opinion, for a basketball player toy, um, especially since they haven't even given us a fucking Kobe. Uh, now that I would pay $50 for. I would pay $50 a piece for a Kobe figure. In fact, I would pay more for a 1-6 scale Kobe figure if I could get my hands on one. Kobe, I don't give a fuck what you say. You can fight me in the comments below. Kobe shits on everybody. I'm sorry, I said what I said. Mamba forever. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and move on into McFarlane Toys, guys, because they had a number of announcements this week and one that I am particularly excited for, and that being their brand new DC Multiverse Hush Batman statue. I think Todd just needs to stick to doing statues. As much as he's done for the DC Multiverse line, they are great figures, especially when you compare them to, say, the Mattel and the DC Icon figures. They have such better detailing, such better paint apps, such better articulation. But in my opinion, when he releases those statues, they are just pristine. And so he did announce the brand new Multiverse Hush Batman statue. And this thing looks absolutely amazing now i do personally have the batman statues both versions of batman and the riddler and i very much enjoy those and so i'm really looking forward to this one in particular uh hopefully i can find them on clearance or for a decent price because even for 40 dollars, it's not a bad price for this statue um but i always tend to buy them early and pre-order them and the second i do i see them in stores for like 10 to 20 dollars off and i'm just like well, I should have fucking waited. So I am holding off my pre-order on this guy and hopefully I'm able to find him in stores for at least five to ten dollars cheaper if I am patient and I wait ever so slightly. Now, much like with this guy, I don't really know where exactly I would put it, but you know me, I'll definitely figure it out to add another amazing Batman statue to my collection. And one bit of McFarlane Toys news that I was able to include in this week's episode since I did decide to refilm it on Saturday is that he's finally releasing a classic Robin figure, guys. So we are finally getting a classic style Robin in the DC Multiverse line. They did also announce and show off their newest Page Puncher series, and this one is all about Aquaman. So in this wave, we will of course be getting Aquaman, Black Manta, Ocean Master, and Aqualad. Um, so yeah, guys, if you're an Aquaman fan, this page puncher series is for you i am not the biggest aquaman fan i'll be honest if he's in justice league he's in justice league if not i pay absolutely no attention to him although the black manta figure does look fucking badass and i can see myself army building them uh if i ever find them on a decent clearance price which i may actually do because it is mcfarlane toys <laughs> sticking with mcfarlane toys but moving on into their dc direct line portion of mcfarlane toys at this point since they've absorbed dc direct like i said todd just needs to stick to doing statues guys because he did announce a brand new dc direct joker statue and that thing just looks absolutely phenomenal i love the colors that are utilized in this statue and it just looks so well done and what good is a joker without his harley because he also announced a brand new harley quinn statue and this thing looks absolutely amazing as well why am i convincing myself to get into statues i will never know guys i mean i've always been like the biggest I mean, I have a few statues here and there, but I'm always like, well, I want articulation. And that's why I get these guys because they're essentially posable statues and stuff like that. But now we have the Doc Knock. We have this Joker. We have this Harley. I mean, it's just getting hard for me to, to stay away from these statues because they just look so badass. And they're always looking badass in that one pose and that, you know, they're 
molded in and formed in but these guys can look just as badass too it just takes a little more messing around and whatnot so yeah that wraps it up for mcfarland toys news so what kind of a toys news week would it be without some marvel legends news and this is one of the reasons why i stay away from marvel legends because it's a rarity when they don't have a single announcement and so they were almost getting through the week without an announcement and marvel legends said wait hold up we have something for you guys this week because if you are a collector of the classic guardians of the galaxy the comic book style they have a figure for you because they did announce their comic style yondu figure this thing will be coming soon and like i said it is based off the comic book yondu and not the mcu one so you can look forward to adding him to your comic guardians collection soon next up they did also announce a brand new two pack the squadron supreme two pack with hyperion and dr spectrum two characters that i have absolutely no knowledge or idea that they even existed to be honest with you guys and that's what i mean by marvel legends is just so much stuff just so much stuff it's like characters that you've never even heard of that maybe had one-off comics and stuff like this that they're like here here's a figure here here's a figure here here's a figure as it is i can barely keep up with my own personal lines and everything uh let alone adding in marvel legends that's just figure after figure after figure after figure after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave and it seems like it's almost weekly that we get these announcements like i said it's really rare when marvel legends takes a week off from revealing something new um but sticking with marvel but changing things up a bit and going to the one six scale hot toys did recently announce their mark 6 2.0 iron man this thing looks absolutely phenomenal um, it even comes with like the gadget mechanics that put the armor on Tony Stark as he's walking around. And so, yeah, it looks absolutely great. Um, I just personally do not collect MCU hot toys because, as you can see, I am more into Batman, Star Wars, one offs. Well, one offs because, I mean, there's not other characters. I mean, I mean, I guess there are other characters in the movies, but it's not like multiple batmans multiple mandos it's like there's only one indie there's only one marty mcfly there's only one okay there's multiple marty's and docs in, in that case but you guys know what i'm saying and then i do have my sam raimi spider-man and my comic spider-man and so i'm good with that i i don't need any mcu representation in my display except maybe a daredevil that would be an amazing addition to my display but he is one of those figures that it does go for a lot on the secondary market so i'm waiting to find him for a decent price before i choose to pull the trigger and add him to the collection um but yeah this iron man looks phenomenal and if you're into iron man if you're into hot toys go ahead and check this one out coming out soon if not sooner rather than later because lately it seems like they've been putting out images and stuff like that batman xe suit it's already out i thought they were getting ready to release it and they were like nope it's it's out it's it's there here buy it when you're ready um so yeah uh, moving on to the loyal subjects guys they did announce their newest wave of tmnt figures coming very soon in the form of slash this guy looks absolutely phenomenal he comes with a lot of great accessories and so yeah a lot of playability with this guy as well we are also getting april o'neill guys will this be a better version than the neca toys maybe unfortunately they are in a five inch scale so they will not measure up or scale well with your neca turtles um, and that's how loyal subjects is getting away with doing these turtle figures because they're doing it in a smaller scale and last but not least we are getting urban legends casey jones so if you're a casey jones fan here's one more for the collection now they do also have on pre-order already their crane and android body set this thing is massive in comparison to the other regular figures that like i said are in the five inch scale this one is slightly larger it's still technically five inch scale just scaled up since it is a larger character in the franchise and whatnot um, so yeah, that wraps it up for Loyal Subjects News, guys. So moving on to the last bit of news that we do have for this week. As always, I do want to shout out and thank my friends over at Diamond Select, especially their marketing manager, Zach Oat, for providing all the information and images 
for this portion of the news. So starting off with their new Cobra Kai Deforms PVC figurines. These are little miniature figurines that you can put on your desk or your shelves, wherever you want, to show your love and representation of Cobra Kai. Now they are $8.99 a piece and they should be coming out very soon. Moving on to their gallery statues, guys. We are getting three new gallery statues. The first one being G.I. Joe Baroness. This is an amazing representation of the Baroness in the gallery statue form. And so, yeah, she should be coming out very soon for you, Joe fans. And she's retailing at $60. Next up, we are getting Electra as Daredevil. This is a great mashup between two great characters in the Marvel Universe, Elektra and Daredevil. Obviously, we know the dichotomy and the relationship between the two. I don't really know what storyline this is from, what happened to Daredevil for her to have to take over the Daredevil persona, but it's actually a really cool mashup of these two iconic Marvel characters, and it's really tempting to want to pick up, you know, to have this unique representation on my shelf. And that's something great that I feel like gallery statues do is take these unique characters and give us representations of them for our displays because um, no figure company has done deceased Batman in Mr. Freeze's suit. But Diamond Select's gallery statue did give us a deceased zombified Batman in Freeze's suit for a gallery statue. That still blows my mind. It's one of my all-time favorite pieces in my Batman collection um, because it's such a unique piece. You know, it's not just another typical Batman. It's literally zombified Batman in Mr. Freeze's suit with the dome cracked open. So such an awesome piece in my collection. And last but not least, we are also getting an Immortal Hulk in the gallery line. This thing is a giant, massive piece, so it will be retailing at $125. And the last bit of news to come from Diamond Select this week is that their G.I. Joe Mini Mates Series 2 will be released very soon. So you got the heroes in the first one. In this one, they're giving you the villains. We are getting Baroness, Cobra Commander, Storm Shadow, and of course, Destro. So once again, shout out to Diamond Select and especially their marketing manager, Zach O, for providing all the images and information for this portion. So with that being said, guys, I once again get to crumble up this list of notes and end this week's podcast. So as always, guys, thank you so much for checking out this week's episode of Coffee and Toys. Once again, shout out and thank you so much to this channel sponsor, Entertainment Earth. You can check out my Entertainment Earth affiliate link down in the description below. There you can browse all sorts of cool figures that they have on their website, all while helping support the channel. Once again, I will be trying to schedule Coffee and Toys Live for two weeks from now. And uh, yeah, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for once again spending this day or time with me. And as always, I've been your host, Jesse the Bat Majoral, aka The Buff Collector. And as always, have a great fucking day. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed those picks, you can find the full images over on Instagram at Cool Figures. And I do also have a separate Instagram account for my more thought out, planned out, more edited picks called Epic Shots by Cool Figures. Check it out. If you like what you see, leave me a follow there as well. And if you guys like unboxings, check me out over on TikTok at Cool Figures. That's where I post all of my unboxings and check me out every sunday for coffee and toys a weekly toy news toy talk podcast where we will go over all the latest and great toy news reveals pre-orders weekly toy haul and so much more and join me every wednesday over on instagram for coffee and toys live where i will speak to a new guest every week about toys toy hunting toy photography and so much more Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about toys. I really do appreciate it. 